Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rimmer Brothers today to do a cam belt on a 300 TDI Discovery. You don't have to set the radiator out to do this job, we're gonna, we are going to set the radiator intercooler out so we can get a better view of what we're doing and it's a little bit easier when you're putting the cam belt back on. So we're going to drain the water, send it up, bottom hose off, get the water out first and then we'll take the radiator out. The Jubilee clip on the bottom hose was facing the wrong way so I couldn't get a screwdriver on underneath. So we're going to take the top cowling off, which is one little clip, up and off. We are going to take the top hose off, the viscous fan, which I'll show you how to get that off in a moment. Then we'll take the main uh, radiator cowling off so we can gain access to the, to the bottom hose. We'll do both the hose clips, top and bottom of the, of the top hose there. Take that hose off, get it out of the way, and we'll do the same with the intercooler pipe. Take both uh, Jubilee clips off, remove that pipe so we can get to the plastic cowling. I'm now going to remove the viscous coupling to get your spanner on the nut and you give it a sharp tap. That loosens the fan off, then you can spin it off its threads. Remember to do it in a clockwise direction. Now remove the two top clips from the cowling and just reach down and unclip the hose that clips around the bottom of it. Once that's out of the way, we can then pull the, pull the uh, plastic howl out of the way. With the cowling out of the way, I'm now just going to reach down, undo the bottom hose jubilee clip, remove the bottom hose so the water can drain into oil drain that's underneath the vehicle. I'm then going to take off the top bleed pipe and also the two oil cooler pipes at the uh, left of the radiator and the lower intercooler pipe. Once that's out of the way, it's just two M8 bolts at the front, we can lift the radiator out. Okay, just before I take the, uh, the fan belt off, I'm just going to crack off these four M6 bolts on the idler pulley. Just while the belt on, it's a little bit easier just to crack those off. Then we'll put a bar on, lift up the idler, take the belt off. Then we can remove the idler pulley nice and easy because we've uh, slackened off them bolts. So that we can get the, uh, the crankshaft pulley bolts off, this is the tool that you use to hold the crank in place while you undo the bolt. It's four M8 bolts through the, uh, through, through the tool and it actually screws to the front pulley so you can put the, this bolt it onto the front pulley and then use another bar and socket to undo the nut on the bottom pulley. Now the bottom uh, crankshaft pulley tool is, is bolted to the pulley so you get a 27mm socket onto the bottom pulley nut anti-clockwise, undo it. Okay, so we can take the nut off and then we can take the bottom pulley off. I've bolted just a multi-purpose puller onto the, um, the bottom pulley holding tool so we can just use some longer M8 bolts going into the bottom crank pulley and then we can just pull it off. They do get quite tight, so they are. You definitely will need a puller to do this job. Just keep winding it through. Here's the pulley we've used bolted on with two long M8 bolts into the crank pulley and then we've pulled it off. It's worth mentioning now just to check the uh, torsional vibration damper rubber isn't perished. Uh, if it is you'll have to fit a new bomb pulley. Now we're just going to remove this cover so we can see the cam belt. There's 14 the M8 bolts but they are a 10mm head so you get your 10mm socket under all 14 and we'll just tap the cover off. Right, we've got all the bolts uh, removed now. Just worth mentioning that there are lots of bolts, they're all different sizes, so it's probably just worth making a note of where they all go, put them in order, so when you go and put them back together, it's not quite such a difficult job. And we're just going to remove this cover, and there we can see the cam belt. And we'll time it up in a moment, put the pins in, and then we'll change it. So we've put the bottom pulley bolt back in, the crank bolt back in, so we can turn, turn the engine over with our 27mm socket and ratchet. You turn it over, there's a little point on the, on the crank of the Woodruff key, which points directly upwards. There's also, in the um, bell housing, there's a little hole where you can put a pin into the crankshaft, um, and it goes straight into the flywheel. The mark on the camshaft is a cutout on the pulley lines up with a little cutout next to that bolt hole and the injector pump you put a pin 
straight through the pulley and it goes into the uh, into the hole in the in the pump. So once that's all set and the, all the pins are in place and everything's locked up, you can relu reduce the tensioner and take the belt off. We use an eight mil Allen key down the centre of the tensioner and we'll undo that set screw and that releases the tensioner tension on the belt so we can remove that set screw we also need to remove the 15 mil spanner size nut from the tensioner uh, from the idler so and then we'll pull both them pulleys off um, and then we can fit the new belt the tensioner has got the bracket where you can put the socket uh, head in to adjust the tension but it's also got the hole for the mounting and that is where the idler sits in so you need to sit that in there and place them both on together to tighten it up We've fitted the new tensioner, we're going to slacken off the three 10mm bolts in the, um, in the inject pump pulley so then we'll fit the belt, it will, as it, tension, as it tensions it up it just, it'll move that pulley a little bit so it's the right tension and the pump hasn't moved then we'll tighten everything up and we'll re recheck the timing I've refitted the belt, it is fairly self-explanatory but if, uh, if you are a bit unsure it's probably a good idea to take a photograph with your, your mobile telephone before you remove the old belt so just in case you are unsure of where it goes. Uh, so once the belt's back on we can then fit a socket bar in the tensioner, there's a little square cut out for that and using a torque wrench you tension it up to 12 newton meters that will automatically pull around the uh, the pulley on the injector pump and when that uh, 12 newton meters you'll tighten up using your 8 mil allen key and there's a new bolt provided in the kit Ten tighten the tensioner up and then tighten the um, the pump uh, bolts up 25 newton meters the pump bolts the belt's on they're all timed up the uh, tensioner um, 8 mil allen set screw once tightened up to 45 newton meters the three pump bolts are 25 newton meters then we can remove our pin we use a 9.5 millimeter drill bit to, to uh, time up the, the injector pump which is absolutely bang on the right size we'll remove the pin out of the bellows in the, to, into the flywheel and then we'll rotate the, en rotate the engine by um, two times uh, and then recheck our timing marks once they're all okay we're ready to put the cover back on I've turned the engine over twice, um, so we're going to recheck our timing marks. So put your pin back in the pump, the pin back in the bell housing into the um, flywheel, check the camshaft pulley one, it's all okay, bell tension is nice. So now we're going to clean off the gasket around the cover, fit the new gasket, we're also going to put, put the new front pulley oil seal in as well. We're now going to knock the old seal out with a drift and hammer, a couple of taps on each side, and that should come straight out and then we're going to refit the new seal. With the old seal out, we're going to just, we're just cleaned up where it goes and we're just going to pop the new seal in. You just tap it around the, ed around the edges, get it started and then knock it all the way down till it's home. And before we put the cam belt cover back on, we're going to clean off the gasket, replace it with a new one that comes in the kit. We're also we're going to clean the end of the crank so that when we put the crank pulley on, we'll do it with a bit of copper grease as well, so it's nice and, nice and easy to go on, and it's not tight like it was when it came off. And then we'll put the cover back on, replace the bolts, put the crank pulley back in. I've cleaned the inside of the crank pulley, put some copper grease on it, and replaced it on the end of the crank. Now we're just going to put a little bit of uh, Loctite on the bottom pulley bolt, refit it, and it was talking out 80 newton meters followed by 90 degrees. Right, we're going to tighten the bottom pulley to 80 newton meters, on the torque wrench and then if you haven't got dial gauge it's a good idea put your socket on mark it with tip x and then turn it by the 90 degrees we've refit the bottom pulley we're just going to fit the idler pulley on now and then we're going to refit the belt these serpentine belts you know sometimes you, they are difficult to see where they go because there are so many pulleys so once again it's probably a good idea just to take a photograph with your tip mobile phone before you take the belt off, just so you know where it goes. So that's the cam belt job done. We've refitted the belt, we've put the radiator back in, we're going to put the bottom hose on, the lower cowl, refit the viscous fan, replace the hoses, top it up with coolant, check it's all okay, run it up, make sure the heater's warm. Uh, if, you, if you have any issues on any of the other jobs, like the radiator, the viscous fan, if you just relate to the other videos on this series, you can uh, re reference them.